we use a nickel silicon alloy impregnated cylinder wall. It's an aluminum cylinder. And this is, uh, this is pretty neat for a number of reasons. For one, it's very lightweight. For two, it transfers heat very rapidly. Now the cylinder, you'll note, is air-cooled while the head is water-cooled. That gives us some redundancy. In the case uh, uh, if you were to lose your coolant for some reason, uh, you do have some cooling on the cylinders and you can continue on at a reduced power setting. Now, with the uh, nickel cell cylinder lining <coughs> on that cylinder, a lot of people are hesitant uh, to embrace that technology. Uh, but I'm here to tell you that it really works very, very well. BMW is using it on uh, most of their current automobile engines. Porsche has been using it for years. It's a little more expensive, but it gives great results. The piston to cylinder clearance on a 9 series engine is so precise, so tight, that on a new engine it starts out 0 to 8 tenths of 1,000 of an inch total piston to cylinder clearance. Remarkably tight. And that means that these engines don't really require a break-in period. On a Lycoming or Continental, after overhaul or after new manufacture, you run the engine hard for the first hour or so until the ring seat and the oil consumption drops. When the oil consumption drops on a new Lycoming or Continental, that tells you that the rings have seated. And what you're actually doing is you're machining the rings while you're running the engine so that they fit to the cylinder walls properly. This engine is so precise, it's built so precisely from the factory that there is no need to machine or break in the rings. It won't burn oil typically right from the get-go. And our oil consumption is more in line with automotive uh, standards. It's not unusual for uh, a 9 series engine to run for 100 hours and only burn about half a quart of oil. And you can go up to 100 hours on an oil change if you're using unleaded fuel.